the perfect addition to your Secrets of the Nile and Egypt cruise with Alma Waterways extensions. Join us as we review the available extensions and in particular our review of our pre-cruise extension that we did in Jordan. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications to get notified each time we post. Hi, Deb. Hi, Ken. So today is part three of our video series on Alma Waterways, The Secrets of Egypt and the Nile where we're going to sit today and talk about the pre and post cruise extension options, one of which we did. And so we'll spend quite a bit of time reviewing that. Why don't you tell our viewers and listeners what options are available, Deb? You can visit Jordan pre-cruise. You can visit Israel post-cruise. Okay. You can visit Dubai either pre or post-cruise. And you can combine two of those. So you can, for example, go to Dubai before your Nile cruise and then go to Israel after, or you can go to Jordan before your Nile cruise and then go to Dubai after. So, so you have quite a bit of options there. For our purposes, we, we just had the ability, well, basically had the time <laughs> to do, uh, <laughs> we did a Jordan pre-cruise. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. Yes, I really love Jordan. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think it was probably, well, there was a lot of highlight. There was certainly a lot of highlights on this, on this, cruise but jordan was for for me was definitely a do not miss there was so mm -hmm. much there mm -hmm. in in a in a four-day period so where did we start out with well we flew into amman okay we stayed at a really beautiful hotel mm. in downtown amman uh the saint regis gorgeous yes, just gorgeous gorgeous i think we were there for two nights yeah. So the next day we boarded a motor coach and began our tour. So where was our first destination? First place that we went was to the ancient city of Jarash. Okay. We got to explore there. It was a really neat site. All the all the rooms and you, you could see down the main what you call today an avenue for like a mile down to the end and it was it, it was an amazing place fascinating fascinating mm -hmm. ancient city really from there then we went to um an old castle the aljun castle got to explore there we didn't climb to the top but we we saw a lot of exhibits and and they had some mosaics there that were really interesting as well right on right on mm -hmm. Like after after our first day where we visited Jarosh and Quillette, we were off to the Dead Sea, and that was a fair drive and all yeah. along the way. Plus, we had the like you you mentioned, we had the tour the the city tour of Amman as we're making our way to the Dead Sea. Uh, it was interesting because the city is um, pretty hilly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just nothing but hills, yeah. and actually, I think for <laughs> Probably the first day and a half, I thought Jordan was nothing but hills. Because <laughs> you'd be going up like three, 4,000 feet. Yeah. And then, of course, the second day, then we dropped down to about, what, 1,500 feet below sea level? 467 meters, I think it is, below sea level when we went down to visit the Dead Sea. And it's amazing because when you're you're traveling along there, you're you're up so high and then it's just down and down and, and down, down and, and down. down. <laughs> and I spent, I think, uh, <laughs> half the time I was, the first half the time I was in Jordan, wondering how well the brakes worked <laughs> on our bus, because <laughs> I figured the guardrails on some of these hairpin turns as you were going down would not stop our bus if it decided to go over the side. And it reminded me a lot of the Amalfi Coast and of Cape Breton here in Canada when you go around the Cape Breton Trail. All of this, all of these tours that we should mention here, we're probably going to talk about it quite a bit as we go along, but uh, mm -hmm. they were all guided. And yes. my goodness gracious, I can't we had say two excellent guides. enough about the excellent guides that were along mm -hmm. on this, this part of the adventure. Like it's just, they just, they just made it and did everything for it. it was just grand you know in between seeing the sites not only telling us about what we were going to see and what we were seeing when we were there 
they also spent time talking about their culture and answered questions that we might have, you know, about how they live and their customs yeah. and, and, and so on. And it was really interesting. Besides trying to teach us a few words in Arabic. <laughs> that didn't fare out. Didn't that, didn't fare, that didn't fare out too well, but no. But all in all. Yes, I actually I recall Loai related the story of his arranged marriage. Yes. Yeah, it was was really, really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Just fascinating yeah. to yeah. to hear how different the cultures is the culture is and you know, in, in some regard how well it works. It's you know, it works for them. So we went to a resort on the Dead Sea. And mm -hmm. where did it we? It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> it sure was. Yeah. It sure was. And where did we head from there? Well, when we were at the resort at the Dead Sea, we had lunch there, which was really nice, and we also got a chance to. Everybody took their bathing suit and and got changed and went for a dip in uh, the Dead Sea. That was quite interesting <laughs> because yes, you you were quite buoyant in the Dead Sea. Everybody was encouraged just to lie back and and you and whether you could swim or not, you were floating. Yeah. And then when you came out, you could um, cover yourself with the Dead Sea mud, which you did and I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I I found interesting about that is I managed to cut myself getting in, of course, but it stung like anything. It was just a, uh, a cut on my finger and it stung That's for about 10 or 15 minutes. But when I came out, it was like it had never had happened. You couldn't even see where I'd been cut. It, it just seemed to heal it. That I found very interesting. Well, that's kind of what they say about the powers of the Dead Sea and, 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 the, and that kind of thing, right? You're right. Yeah. And uh, when we left there, I think we, we traveled on to uh, the town of Petra, where we stayed the night, because we're going to go to Petra the next day. That was one of the highlights, really was one of the highlights of, of this four-day adventure, was was Petra. Exactly. And that's that's why I wanted to go to Jordan, because I wanted to see Petra. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we found other highlights there that, you know, I enjoyed just as much or almost as much. So Petra really was, really, really was a highlight. And the hotel that we stayed at was basically right across the street from the Petra Museum, yes. which then leads into where you take a walk down to what everybody knows is actually Petra. Mm. Why don't you tell us about that, Deb? When you go from the museum, um, you're going through kind of a little area where there's kind of a market. And then you come out to what you would call like the walkway to to Petra, and that was that was a fair distance actually. Right. Uh, people could, if they wanted to, take um, a horse ride down to the entrance, but we walked. Right. And you probably wouldn't realize it when you were walking, but the whole way into Petra, you're actually walking on a very gradual downward slope. It's it's quite a bit lower in level than where you start out. And all along the sides, um, it was a long walk till you entered like this, the seek, which is kind of the walkway that you usually see that goes through the, the cliffs on either side. And um, all the way along there, the, like our guide was telling us about what we were seeing, there would be carvings, there would be carvings there, there would be plants there that he would point out, there would be parts of the original irrigation system that you would see. And now and again, you'd see the odd odd vendor. It was inhabited. And in order to get uh, the people to leave the caves where they were living in, in Petra, they had to promise them that they could go back and in the daytime and be yeah. vendors. So that's and, why you see so many vendors, you know, yeah. during your walk and actually, you know, when you when you get to Petra. But anyway, yeah. it was really, really interesting. We were stopping along the way to examine, you know, all the all these things that were on the walk. It it was a great walk and I'll never forget it. we got to shortly after we got to what they call the elephant rock, because it looked it was, it kind of resembles an elephant. He distracted us by trying to get us to look at something behind us. Right. And then <laughs> when he, he then asked us to turn around, and when we turned around, it was that classic picture where you the could treasury. see the treasury yeah. between the two, like the opening 
between the two tall walls of yeah. rock. And it was just, it flabbergasted everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, for fans of uh, Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, that canyon is that famous canyon that you see them riding out of at the end of the movie. The The ground has changed a little bit since there, it showed them on horses. Well, you couldn't do that today, but it's a really fascinating place to visit, the treasury. And then you, you come into this area called Petra, and it's just amazing. We stayed around the treasury ourselves, and we walked down as far as the <laughs> amphitheater. And, and yeah, there was... There was uh, a lot a lot to see there there were uh people on horseback people on camels there were a lot of vendors and so on yeah but to actually see walk and see the whole site of petrol would take you two or three days on foot but it was fascinating and when we came to leave some people actually walked back out and uh but there were like golf carts there that were taking you back out if you didn't want to walk back out because as i said it was on sort of an incline when you'd be walking but that time the sun was higher in the sky so it was a yep. little bit hotter <laughs> yeah that's right because we when we started out to, to visit this this was fairly early in the morning to yes. beat the midday heat yes and that we did that a lot in jordan any anywhere yep. that we were going to that we knew we'd be outside for a while yep. in the sun they tried to schedule it early in the morning which was very much appreciated and we talked about it earlier, like we had some really, really excellent guides. Mm -hmm. And let's take a second here and I'll play an interview that we did actually in front of the treasury with our yes. guide, Luai. Yes. I'm here today in one of the seventh wonders of the world. He's one of the most exceptional tour guides in this beautiful country we call Jordan. Hi, Luai. Hi. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Thank you so much when it comes to Jordan. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. Thank you so much, Mrs. Kind of you. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is uh, Luai. Uh, I'm 48 years old. I'm married with four kids. Uh, and I've been doing this profession for something like 25 years. I have a degree in Jordan history. Okay. Love it. I love it. And in a country so steeped in history, from what I've seen in just in this short walk that we did this morning, that you could probably spend weeks in Jordan and Definitely. not see everything. Definitely, because, you know, one of the uh, uh, archaeologists say that if you put a fence around the country of Jordan, you're going to have the biggest open air museum in the world. Well, wherever you go in Jordan, you will find rooms. So that's why you can spend easily 10 days if you want to see the major highlights in our country. Definitely. Speaking of major highlights, if we were here and we had a short time, what would be the must-sees and do's in Jordan? Well, uh, you know, Petra is a place where you can spend like full day easily because there are many things to see in Petra because the size of the city is very extensive. Uh, we've got beautiful places located in the north where we have very well preserved Gromer ruins. Uh, there are beautiful castles located in the east part of Jordan with the beautiful fresco paintings okay. on the wall. Dead Sea is the lowest point on Earth. And floating in the Dead Sea is, is, is an experience because it is the only place where you can float for Christie. So there are many things to Wadi Rum also. is is an amazing landscape desert where we have beautiful sandy dunes and rock formation. Uh, we've got many things to see in Jordan in terms of history. The food in Jordan is, is amazing. I mean, everybody loves the food in Jordan. And the, peace, uh, the, the people over here are peace-living people and very friendly. So that's why we are inviting everyone to come over here and enjoy the country of Jordan because people are amazing and there are many things to, to do over here. Well, I can safely say that we'll be back. Please do. <laughs> Please do. Thank you so much for being with it's us today. It's my pleasure and thank you for coming to Jordan. And we wish that we would see you again for a longer stay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. So after Petra, we um, continued on the motor coach. It was, it was quite a ride. It was several hours. We were all worth it in the end because we ended up at Wadi Rum. And <laughs> wow. And mm. Wadi Rum kind of dispelled that, you know, in, in that coach ride. And when we got to Wadi Rum, just kind of dispelled the, the fact that Jordan was nothing but hills <laughs> because it was really flat. And desert. Exactly. And uh, you were pointing out to me 
the certain areas of of Wadi Rum that were in. Uh, oh yeah, well because Star that's Wars. Because, yeah because I'm a I'm a huge movie fan, right? There's been a ton of movies sh shot at Wadi Rum, and I was pointing at where they shot The Martian and Tantooine from Star Wars, and it just goes on and on and on. Yes. It's just, just a fascinating place to see. And we did that via Jeep tour. Yeah, except they weren't really Jeeps. They were pickup no. trucks, and you sat on benches in the back, whatever yeah. you and call you it. Booking it through the desert. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were covered. They did have, they did have shade. Yeah. But, I mean... Yeah, you were just going, through, racing through the desert on these on these uh, trucks, and uh, you know you'd see they they had various places there at Wadi Rum where you could stay overnight in a in a tent like structure, right? Which would have been fascinating. Actually, uh, some of our party had done that, and we were taken to a traditional Bedouin tent where we had tea. After that, we went to one of the camps uh, where they had a unique restaurant and we had supper there. All of the meals on this pre-cruise extension, yeah, yeah. they were included yeah. and they were fantastic. Great, oh, yeah. great Jordanian flair to, to each and every one of them. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of hummus and pita, and boy, you could <laughs> you could have your your share of hummus and pita all all through the trip. It was great. Yeah, yeah. I think the only meals that weren't included were the two evening meals at St. Regis Hotel in in Amman. The next day, we actually went to Madaba and uh, also visited Mount Nebo. Right. And that was one of the things that was interesting about the visit to Jordan as well, because when you went to Mount Nebo, that's where Moses saw the promised land. Exactly. Like it's, yeah, it's it's sort of a high hill. Right now, there's there was an old church there and a monastery. So there were some monks mingling amongst the crowd of tourists. But you could stand there and you could look out and you could see the Jordan River and the Dead Sea and all the land around it was just amazing for me that was very very enlightening like to stand there and to see that ancient history mm -hmm. you know and our guides are talking about us and you know there on the other on the other side of the dead sea well that's you know that's israel and over here this is where moses stood and viewed the promised land and man a dear it makes it it makes it real for you to yes. see, you know, I'm not I'm not the most religious guy in the world, but oh my goodness, it was it was amazing. It really, really was, and I'm so glad we had the opportunity to take all of that in. Yeah, and, and it wasn't really something that we expected because no, basically we were going we were going to see Petra, but uh, yeah, no, there there were all these other places yeah, that they, turned out to be so fascinating. Yeah. And, and then, when we were there at Mount Nebo, they had, the church had this mosaic floor. And we also saw another mosaic floor. It was an ancient map, and it was in a church in Madaba. And uh, we also visited a place where they made mosaics, and that was fascinating as well. Lots to see and do on mm -hmm. this extension. Yes, yes, exactly. And and that, that was pretty much it. You know, we went back to Amman and flew out of Amman, then to, to Cairo. Right on. But I mean, Alma Waterways looked after you from the time you touched ground in Jordan all the way then to <laughs> you left in Cairo. So highly recommend it. Anything yeah. they looked after our visas and yeah, it's certainly worthwhile if you're going to explore the secrets of the Egypt and the Nile with Alma Waterways to investigate one of the pre or post cruise extensions. Value is there. There's lots to see and do. Yes, I highly recommend visiting Jordan. Yeah. I would love to have seen Israel, but as you said, we just did not have the time. Well, maybe the next time. <laughs> well, when <laughs> and, you're there, you yeah. know, it kind of makes sense, but unfortunately. The other thing on these pre and post cruise extensions, it's worthwhile checking with your real travel expert, uh, depending on when you're going to go. They quite often on the waterways has promotions where they will include the either the pre or post cruise extension at no yes. addition. At no additional cost, at and no that is a cost, and that's real value. Yeah. yeah, that's a real value because, mm -hmm. in, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. They put a lot of time and effort in it to make sure people have a really great experience. Yes, and I can't say enough about our guides. They were yep. just, they were just perfect. I could have stayed. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's a big shout, big a big shout out to Iad and, and Lawai. Yeah. Well, that's great. With that, we will get on to our next video, which is going to be kind of behind the scenes with Alma Waterways. Looking forward to that. All right. Super. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. That about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest and significant other half, Deb. This is part three of our ongoing video series on the secrets of Egypt and the Nile with Alma Waterways. Stay tuned for part four, which is going to be kind of a behind the scenes look with some of the team that is so important to developing and bringing you this great experience with Alma Waterways. And as always, if you'd like to find out more information about Alma Waterways and the secrets of Egypt and the Nile, you can visit our website, realtravelexperts.com to find a travel advisor near you. Send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com or simply leave a comment. We always respond and love to hear from you. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.